HPLC auto samplers allow an analyst to inject multiple samples over the course of a batch without having to physically do the injection themselves. How do these auto samplers work? Well, let's find out. All auto samplers consist of the same key components. They're made of an injection valve, a metering device, a sampling needle, and a sample loop. Sometimes that sample loop can be variable or it can be fixed. The three main injection principles are push to fill, pull to fill, and split loop injection. Let's go ahead and take a look at those. We're going to start with push to fill. So push to fill auto samplers are the closest that you can get to a manual injection. So this follows the same principles as manual injection. It uses two fluid sections to fill the loop. The first one is called the aspiration capillary, where it pulls it from the sample and stores it for a slight period of time before putting it into the loop. The second is the sample loop itself. An example diagram here shows us our injection valve here, our pump and column, our sample loop, our aspiration capillary, sampling syringe, our needle, and a low pressure needle port. So when we start this up and we're pulling our sample, we're gonna pull our sample from the vial into the aspiration capillary using our sampling syringe. Then we're going to move that needle into our low pressure needle port Using that same sam sampling syringe, we're going to push through the aspiration capillary through our uh, injection valve into our sample loop. Once that's completed, the valve is going to go into the inject position, and then the sample loop is now connected directly to our pump through the loop into our column, which will get our uh, peaks and our detectors connected on the other end of our column. At this point, the needle, the aspiration capillary, and the sampling syringe need to be cleaned. That's usually done by way of a second uh, valve and a second pump. The next is pull to fill. So the pull to fill is a much simpler approach to HPLC injections. A simpler HPLC means less moving parts, means less things can break. This style does use a fixed loop and the sample is loaded directly from the vial onto that loop. Overfilling of, this, of the loop is necessary, and the, it's necessary because that gives us a very consistent injection from sample to sample. That way we know that we're injecting the same amount every single time with no variability. No variability leads to more repeatable results. Here's an example of our pull to fill auto sampler. So here we have our sample vial, our needle, our sample loop, sampling syringe, our uh, injection valve is in the load position, our pump and our column. So what we're going to do is we're going to use our sampling syringe to pull sample from our vial through the needle into our sample loop, and we're going to overfill it. So it's going to come into about a little bit beyond number five there. Once we have our loop filled, we're going to switch to our inject. That now connects our pump to our sample loop to our column, and then to our detector. The needle then moves to a wash port or a wash vial, depending on what type of manufacturer uh, has installed. And then the sampling syringe is going to be used to wash out that sample needle. The split loop. The split loop is uh, the needle is now part of the mobile phase path and it requires the use of a high pressure needle seat. It can do uh, vary, varying volumes of sample. So this way you can do, um, you know, if you wanted one injection to be 10 microliters and the next one to be seven microliters, you can do that without changing the sample loop. So in this case, our needle moves to our vial and it's going to pull up some amount of sample loop by way of sampling syringe. Still, same thing, we're in the load position. We've got a pump and a column. Now we have a high pressure needle seat. That needle is going to then move into the high pressure needle seat. The valve is going to move to inject. Now our pump is connected to our sample loop, which is now connected into that needle and needle seat, and then into our column to our detector. This needle seat is now a leak point, which may be uh, something to, to look at 
in case you notice that your pressure in your HPLC is dropping. So that's something that we would take a look at. Here we have an example of a pull to fill system on a Lucidity LC UV. Here's our sample loop and it's a 20 microliter loop. So that's usually uh, denoted on the loop itself. And you can see we have our, our injection valve here with some ports on it. So coming down this line here that comes from our needle, from our samples over here, through the needle, around the sample loop, and up on our sampling syringe side. With, if that's all connected, then the pump is connected here directly to our column, allowing mobile phase to bypass our uh, sample loop. Once the loop is full, then our injection valve turns. And once that turns, then the needle is then connected directly to our sampling syringe. Then the pump connects to our sample loop, comes through our sample loop and down here and up into our column oven through our, our column and into our detector. And then when that happens, we're allow we allow the system to then clean the needle while the run is happening speeding up our run just by a little bit. So we pre-clean before our next injection. That way you always have a nice clean needle and clean um, sample loop. So you'll hear that valve turn a couple of times. So it'll, it'll turn to inject, it'll wait about two minutes and then switches back and allows you to start cleaning the sample loop, the needle and the sampling syringe portion all while the run is happening. That way you don't lose any time in between your runs. Please like and subscribe and make sure to click the bell icon to receive more content from Lucidity.